Hi, I am Dilip Sangagoti, coordinator in the Northeast Zone of iCommerce India. Welcome to all in our Unfold Northeast India 2023 web series, webinar number three. I invite our member, architect Anju Moni Kolita, to moderate this webinar, and Ms. Gitanjali Borua will assist her as and when required. I also invite our EA, Ms. Arusi of ICOMOS Delhi office to give technical support in this webinar. Now, I hand it over the platform to Anjumani uh, Kolita uh, and proceed. Good luck. Thank you so much, sir, for your warm welcome. Uh, a very good evening to everyone. And with this, we are going to start uh, the third webinar on the Deco Bridge, which you can consider to be an architecture marvel. And uh, before we start, I would like to give a small uh, this, um, introduction about uh, Deco Bridge, uh, which is considered to be a a very old bridge which has been constructed by Britisher and it is nested in the heart of Assam. And uh, this bridge uh, was been constructed in the colonial era. And as I told you before, it is uh, been constructed by British. And it also, uh, it is actually a replica of a bridge that has been uh, constructed in England over the river Thames. And the, um, the techniques uh, which, uh, in which it actually operates, it's considered to be the same. So now under the watchful supervision of PWD of the former government of Assam, um, uh, like HG Coxage and Hari Prashad Barua, alongside companies like uh, Great Wales and uh, Tata Iron and Steel, they have constructed this company and they have each their names in the history. This bridge, a vital link connecting the past and future, <coughs> owes its celebrated legacy to those who recognize its significance. Thanks to their dedication, this architecture marvel now basks in global heritage, spotlight, and a living bridge that tells the tale of resilience and historical grandeur. With this, I would like to first welcome our president of ICOMOS India to give a welcome speech. I'd like to welcome Dr. Reema Huja to give a welcome speech. Reema, ma'am. So I would like to uh, welcome our commissioner PWRD, uh, engineer Chandan Sharma to give a welcome speech. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am Mr. Sarasandhan Chama, Special Commissioner and Special Secretary, Public Works Road Department. Welcome all of you to this webinar. This is a webinar about Deco Steel Bridge, a treasure of the history of engineering marvels. And it is organized by Thomas India, Northeast Zone. And I, it is a, as all of you know, this bridge is built was built in 1935 on the river Deco in Chicago district by a British company, Great Weight Company, India Limited. And one Assamese awesome engineer, Hari Prasad Borua, was also there in this in the construction of the bridge. And we expect that this bridge will be under UNESCO heritage site very soon. So. We welcome all of you on this, this uh, webinar program. Okay, then this is my welcome address. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your encouraging words. Now, uh, I'd like, to, without taking much time, since we are running very much short of time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker who is going to give a talk on the Cobridge. So with this, I'd like to welcome Engineer Abdul Motin Chaudhary to give his, <clears throat> to present his talk on history utility services on Colonial Deco Bridge of Assam. 
I'd like to give a small introduction of uh, Mr. Chaudhary. He is a additional he is additional chief engineer at PWD Roads in Guwahati, and he is a distinguished civil engineer known for his excellence. He is a graduate of Jorhat Engineering College, where he began his notable career with significant nine year tenure in board road construction division. He has also contributed in the construction of Indo Bangladesh, <coughs> Bangladesh border roads and fencing. He played a pivotal role in key projects, including Guwahati, Jogipara, Broadgauge rail line, and <coughs> iconic Bogibil rail come road bridge over Brahmaputra. His excellent, extensive service under World Bank funded initiative highlights his, his commitment to the rural road development in Assam. Mr. Chaudhary's dedication is further evidenced by his participation in training program and IIT Kanpur and National Institute of Training for Highway Engineers. With this, I would like to welcome Sir to give a talk on his topic. But, <clears throat> uh, Chaudhary, Sir. Good evening. I am uh, Himadri Shekhar Das. Actually, Mr. Abdul Watin Chaudhary is uh, out of station on some important assignment. So, I am going to give a presentation on his behalf. No issue, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm going to present uh, about the history, utility, and serviceability of the colonial Dikho Steel Bridge of Assam. Okay. Can you please start the slideshow? Thank you. About Sipsagar district, an overview. Sipsagar, formerly known as Rangpur, stands as a significant historical city in Assam. Position approximately 363 kilometers to the east of Guwahati, the gateway of the enchanting northeastern region of India. In its earlier era, Chipsagar served as the capital of the Ahom, the ruler of Assam for over six centuries until the arrival of the British. The signing of the Treaty of Yandabu on February 24, 1926, marked the formal establishment of British control over Assam. This treaty not only concluded the approximately six century long reign of Ahom dynasty, but also initiated various administrative alterations, including the creation of distinct districts. The mighty Brahmaputra flows in the northern side of the district, along with Dikhor, Dorika, and Janti being the other main rivers. Next slide, please. About a district at a glance. Sipsagar is a city surrounded in a rich historical legacy, which is marvelous historical monument, along with natural beauty, bearing testimony to glorious past. Amidst this enchanting landscape, the Sipsagar Steel Bridge stands tall, not only as magnificent field of engineering, but a crucial link connecting the various regions. With a combination of exquisite design, structural strength, and technical expertise, this bridge has become an integral part of Assam's transportation network. Next slide. Sipsagar is a city surrounded in a rich historical legacy, which is marvelous historical monuments, along with natural beauty, bearing testimony to glorious past. Amidst this enchanting landscape, the Sipsagar Steel Bridge stands tall, not only as magnificent field of engineering, but a crucial link connecting the various regions. With a combination of exquisite design, structural strength, and technical expertise, this bridge has become an integral part of Assam's transportation network. Next slide, please. About the Dikho River, the Dikho River is a left tributary of the Brahmaputra River. It rises in the Zunaiboto district in Nagaland, flows through the Sipsagar Assam, and joins the Brahmaputra River at Dikho Muk. The Google map is shown. Next slide. Yeah. This is my aerial view. Route showing Dikho River from Nazira town. Next slide. Yeah. About the history, the impressive Dikho steel bridge stands 
as a treasure of history and engineering marvel. The British gifted Eastern India with three magnificent steel bridges symbolizing innovation. Bridge over Padma River, presently in Bangladesh, also known as Hardrin Bridge. Bridge over Dikho River in Sipsagar, Assam. Bridge over Hooghly River in Kolkata, West Bengal, also known as Rabindra Setu. The Dikho Steel Bridge is located at Amguri Ghat in Sipsagar that showcases marvelous engineering skills. Next slide, please. Dikho Steel Bridge, located at Amguri <coughs> Ghat towards the southwest side of Sipsagar town. It bridges the Assam Trank Road to Jaisagar. The bridge was built by the renowned engineering firm Messrs. Brainwet and Company India Limited over the river Dikho in 1925, which was completed in the year 1935. The steel parts of the bridge was manufactured to size by the then English British Steel Company and India's Tata Iron Steel Company. The parts manufactured in England were first brought to Kolkata and then transported in smaller lots by small ships along with the parts from Tata Iron Steel Company. These ships then start their cruise from Kolkata to Thanagat at Sipsagar, making their entrance via Dikomuk in Sipsagar. Next slide, please. Mr. Hari Prasad Borua was born in the year 1889 at Khumtai, which is currently at Golagat district of Assam. An engineering graduate from Calcutta University in 1915, Mr. Borua is a meritorious student who was appointed as an assistant engineer in 1918. He served as the executive engineer PWD Debrigger, Assam, and was engineer in charge for the construction of the said Diko steel bridge. Borua's expertise was not limited to hydraulics. His efforts helped in establishing the first engineering college in Assam, in Guwahati, namely Assam Engineering College, with him as its first principal. Next slide, please. The glitch. The Diko River provided a gateway to Nazira, a town crucial for the tea production in Assam. Tea chests were loaded in steamers from Nazira, carried across the Diko, then to Brahmaputra and ultimately to Calcutta, the commercial locus of eastern India. The bridge would have made it difficult for steamers to pass. Therefore, incorporation of uh, lifting mechanism has been made, provision has been made. The uniqueness about this bridge is that the midsection of the bridge was able to be lifted to let the steamers pass through. For ease of traffic movement through the waterway, in order to carry the tea leaf from Assam Company, a leading tea production and first tea plantation company in the world, which was headquartered in Nazira, a town in Sipsagar district, and transporting the same to Calcutta, present day Kolkata, the lifting mechanism was incorporated in the bridge. Next slide, please. Here are a few snapshots of the Dikho Steel Bridge from various directions. No. Advocacy for conservation of the bridge. The bridge has become an enduring symbol of the historical three-century-old town, despite its significance as a crucial road link connecting Upper Assam to Lower Assam via the Assam Trunk Road. Vehicular movement is now prohibited. The significance of the bridge is evident as nationalist revolutionaries attempted to set it ablaze during the Quit India movement in 1942. Next slide, please. To boost Kipsagar's tourism appeal worldwide, the old illuminated iron bridge could be a major attraction. With some adjustment, the area under the bridge along the river bank could be transformed into a captivating spot for tourists. 
We have a wonderful heritage that we must safeguard for the benefit of our future generations, ensuring they can also witness and experience its beauty. Thank you. That was all in the presentation from my side. Now we'll be moving to our next presentation, who will be presented by Engineer Nilutpal Kalita. And uh, he will be delivering the speech on technology, design, <coughs> speciality, and architectural importance of colonial eco steel bridge of Assam. So, with this, I'd like to welcome Engineer Nilotpal Kalita to deliver his speech. But before that, I would like to give a small introduction about Sir. So, Mr. Kalita, he is also an uh, engineer of PWD department. And he has been a beacon of inspiration in his field. He is a graduate in civil engineering in 1995. And he is having two master's degree with specialization in soil, soil mechanics and foundation engineering and structural engineering, respectively. He has been a <coughs> trailblazer in the industry. Commencing his professional journey in 2000, he served as a design engineer in Yemen, India Limited, before joining the Assam Public Works Department in 2003. There, he is currently holding the position of executive engineer. engineer. His illustrious, illustrious career has centered the design and execution of numerous significant structures, including 1,200 bridges and flyovers, many of which stand as landmark in the state. Engineer Nilutpal Kalita's commitment to excellence and his valuable contribution to civil engineering make him a very respected figure in the international engineering community. <coughs> Mr. Kalita, we are really happy and honored to have you here. Now, I would like to welcome you to deliver your speech. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. May I start? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, very good afternoon to all of you. I'd like I'll, to welcome you. Mr. Kulta, go on. You can move ahead. A very good afternoon to all of you. I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of the Public Works Road Department of Government of Assam to this presentation. Next. Next slide, please. Next. Colonial Deco Steel Bridge. Engineering Marvel of Colonial Era. Under the colonial rule, engineering and architecture become an emblem of power designed to endorse the honor. The Deco Bridge constructed by Britishers proved their engineering brilliance of the early 20th centuries. Next. Now, this drawing shows the trajectory of the Deco River. Uh, this is the starting point of the Diko River. It's in the Nagaland and is the end point where it joins the Brahmaputra River at Dikomuk. Next slide, please. Actually, the Diko River divides some part of the state from the rest. This proved to be a hindrance for the resource extraction of British Empire. That's the reason for planning a breeze over River Diko to make the Assam trunk road thorough and hindrance free and to enhance connectivity. The breeze has not only transformed local connectivity, but has also become an emblem of infrastructure development in the Indian state of Assam. Next, please. Next slide. And this is an aerial view of the old Deco steel bridge. And this is the third bridge, in fact, constructed just 30 meter upstream of uh, the old bridge. And it was constructed in the year uh, 1919 and open for traffic. Next slide. Now, this Google map shows the location of old Deco bridge. You can see the location of the second bridge over River Deco. This, this one, and this bridge is known as Gammon Bridge. 
and open for traffic sometimes around 1978 and 79. So Difco was, Difco Bridge was the first bridge to be constructed over River Difco. Next, next slide, please. Next slide, ma'am. This iconic steel bridge was constructed by Braithwaite and Company, India Limited. One can see Braithwaite Company's name affixed in some member of the bridge. Next. Brief history of the bridge. As the history part of this bridge has already been covered by the previous speaker, I'd like to skip. Next, please, ma'am. This iconic breeze is span driven vertical lift type breeze. This one. The vertical lift breeze or lift breeze is a type of movable breeze in which a span rises vertically while remaining parallel with the road surface. Vertical lift breeze use cables, pulleys, motors, counterweight to rise a section of the breeze much like an elevator. These are some of the no, no, previous ma'am. Uh, yes, these are some broad features of the breeze. The type of foundation is screwed pile foundation. Type of substructure is built of steel columns. Superstructures are all made up of either steel joist or truss type. The overall length of the breeze is 159.07 meter, carriageway 4.88 meter, and uh, vertical clearance is 4.5 meter. At that time, uh, it was a two land breeze, in fact. Next, ma'am. Construction time, 10 years approximately. I'm not sure. Some literature, literary source says almost 10 years were required from conceptualization to commissioning of the breeze. Some literature say only one year was actually used for construction of the breeze, perhaps transportation of materials might have taken significant time. Next, next one. Technology adopted. I've listed point wise. Movable type adopted to serve both land and water traffic. Span configured based on size of steamer and waterway, of course. Steel tars adopted for its lightweight strength, suitability for high seismic zone. Next one. Design methodology. All possible load combinations of dead load, live load, wind load, water current, seismic load, etc., were meticulously considered for the stability analysis of the structure. The foundation of the breeze, a critical element in ensuring long term stability, may have utilized advanced techniques such as pile foundation or Considering the reverse characteristic potentially screw piles, the construction methodology involved precise survey, site preparation, and the assembly of steel components with meticulous attention to detail. Next, ma'am. Next, please. Advantage of vertical lifting breeze. These are some of the advantage, advantages of vertical lift breeze. These are listed below. Apart from uh, this, uh, one more advantage is the requirement of very small approach length. Next one. This is one GAD, general arrangement drawing that I have collected from a contractor, perhaps prepared uh, around 1998. He, the contractor has prepared this drawing, spending his own money to prepare an estimate for repair and rehabilitation of the breeze, but that ne never happened. Next, please. Brief design methodology. These are the design methodology perhaps adopted for design of the breeze. The location and length of the breeze was fixed after careful survey, movable type proposed to serve both land and water traffic. 
Meticular material selected based on strength, durability, availability of material, labors, and machineries. Foundation type was based on subsoil parameters and lo load coming over it, and also ease of construction. Next, ma'am. Check and balances adopted during the early 20th century structural analysis. Dead load analysis, calculating the weight of the bridge structure itself to ensure that it can support its own weight. Live load analysis, determining the maximum load the bridge can support considering traffic, pedestrians, and wind loads. Stress analysis for various, various load combination, including seismic. Seismic analysis is one of the most important uh, analysis that has been carried out because it is situated the high specific, uh, seismically uh, prone uh, zone. Assessing the load that would come on foundation, pile diameter and land requirement was determined with very high precision. Next. Then choosing appropriate materials. Material select, uh, selection like selection of steel cast iron based on their strength, durability, and suitability for the different trust members. Testing, uh, testing and quality control. Ensuring proper material specification to extract material properties required for each component to ensure compliance with design standard. Rivets chosen over bolts for connection to provide more rigidity to the frame structures. Next. Design calculation involved manual calculations as computers were not available at the time. Use of design tables and ready-made charts available to pick up various uh, component and uh, to, 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 uh, to obtain a certain uh, guidelines. Then incorporation of safety factors as provided and available uh, as per the provided uh, and available code at the prevailed code at the time. Drawings were prepared very carefully and reviewed for it, its correctness. Next. Load testing. Conducting load testing on a scale model or a section of the bridge to verify its structural integrity, field monitoring, monitoring the bridge's performance under actual condition to identify any issue of sign of distress. Then regular maintenance, regular uh, conducting regular maintenance ins inspection to identify and address any potential problem before they become uh, unserviceable. Next, its architectural significance, colonial charms, ornamental features, trust brilliance, optimal um, design for load distribution, trust, where, trust members were uh, actually selected uh, to optimize uh, the consumption of uh, steel quantities. Uh, introduction to screw pile foundation, steel structure, and superstructure, the unique structural elements that set the breeze apart. Next one. Architectural importance. It is one of the first vertical lead breeze to be constructed in India. It's a beautiful example of early 20th century breeze architecture. It is a vital link in the Assam trunk road, which connects, uh, which connects the state of Assam to the rest of India. It is a popular tourist destination. It's a source of pride for the people of Assam. Next. Impact on connectivity and economy. The breeze marks the importance of the trade and economic history of pre-independence era. It was a vital link in the, uh, in the AT road that brought the people of Assam close and facilitate, facilitating exchange of culture and made easier for people to access essential services. The breeze has already, uh, already 
the bees has already shaped the history of the region four star commerce trade and tourism next brief report of the damage the marvel the movable central span has stopped moving as the moving mechanisms has got rusted and damaged the gear mechanism ropes of the lifting arrangement is also not working not in a working condition the existing trough plate type decking supporting additional wooden cross girders along with steel cross girders have also got rusted and damaged at many places especially of the central span where 99 percent decking have been damaged making the breeze completely unserviceable all piers of the breeze are seen getting rusted which is bringing an alarming situation to its sustainability next these are some images to show the distress condition of the breeze this is the carriageway this is the mid span where the decking have gone next this is the substructure part you can see the distress condition of the steel bracings uh, these are the trough plates decking trough plates these are cross girders completely damaged by rusting these are uh, wooden wooden uh, supports that has been decayed next the substructure the members got corroded badly Metam metamorphosis has already taken place at some places is the superstructure part next this is the truss members this is the lifting arrangement this is the counterweight this is the guide rollers these are not functioning it has it has completely got rusted and it's it is unable to move next these are railings this is curves completely rusted lifting arrangement next decking of the central movable part completely damaged no one can cross over the breeze these are steel corrugated trough plates completely rusted next decking of the central span gone completely the deck soffit of the solid slab portion completely rusted next the connection lifting cable uh, cabin i'm sorry lifting cable uh, cabin over the movable span all the machinery is uh, required for lifting uh, is housed here then this is the tower frame rusting everywhere next preserve the legacy, legacy call to action need to collective need of collective effort both local and international for restoration and preservation the breeze continues to serve as a symbol of pride for the local inhabitants while its heritage value will attract visitors from far and wide as we conclude our exploration the deco steel breeze stand as a symbol of colonial engineering brilliance and a living testament to assam's rich cultural heritage the deco breeze is today struggling to survive survive even though it has become an indelible mark of identity of the historic three century old township the breeze may collapse at any moment in the near future the vehicular movement was of course prohibited in 1995 if the breeze is restored and maintained properly this iconic breeze can be put on the tourism map of india and of the world and can be a spectacular piece of attraction for the tourist thank you i conclude thank you namaste I'd like to thank uh, Julia Nilotpal Kalita sir for such a well researched speech. Thank you so much sir for giving us so much insight about this bridge, which was not uh, known to many of us. And uh, I myself being an Assamese, I have never heard about this bridge. And but at the same time, I'm very disheartened to see. this the present condition of the bridge and you have rightly pointed out that 
yes this is the time to you know show some action so yeah i would like i am really grateful to you for the research that you have put in uh, you know documenting the bridge and also showing the present condition and thank you so much thank you anju so we'd like to move ahead with our next uh, speech but before that i can see uh, our president of icomos india dr reema huda ma'am is with us so ma'am would like to hear from you if you can share your words with us i can certainly share uh, but i would like to hear from the rest of our speakers all thank you for having me here today because i have the least expertise in the field i hope you can hear me for some reason i don't know what law it is murphy's law or something if something has to go wrong with my internet it happens when i'm speaking maybe i'm i'm a jinx maybe it's the solar storm okay so once again thank you for having me here because uh, what little i've seen of assam on my very brief visit we were crossing over to shivasagar hibahagar and i saw this and i asked the driver and he told me what it was and then from the car itself i whatsapped our northeastern zonal rep for icomos but also the other colleagues and happy to say they all knew about it and they all cared enough to have actually organized a full webinar on something which is an integral part and it should be an integral part of the history as you very likely put it it's technology engineering a uh, treasury of our heritage because as both the previous speakers i've just put a comment about how i have appreciated the presentations of uh, nilotpal kalita ji and uh, himadri shekhar das ji already we have a site right you have so many sites we ignore them in this case this bridge could have been torn down and become scrap and it has not happened about the heritage of the world what do we have here in a sense i see this as a continuation of the homies uh, or the ahom raja Uh, in that period tradition of stone bridges because what is a bridge it's connecting two places in this case the river is being used from nazira to uh, the the port to, as a means of communication but it's always two way the braithwaite company's material comes up river i don't know how up river down river works for you i'm i'm in a desert area <laughs> i'm not speaking from near a river but it's a two way traffic things come things go people travel songs travel so the tradition that communication goes from one place to another but it is linking a large part of the country it's linking us internationally and that is the second part of what the bridge does it is a marvel created by somebody born in the state of assam i'm assuming he was born in the state of assam from what little i know of the biography who has the first college he starts it and he is continuing a tradition that comes from the industrial revolution in britain so we are already globally linked and i would like to make a plea if i am allowed to because as i said i have the least expertise for saying this that let us go ahead put together what we can to protect this particular site but also associated uh, aspects of it you know restore if possible conserve what can be conserved uh, talk about the engineering techniques but then also make a plea a bid for a transnational unesco uh, listing document you know documented first in which we have the other bridge in bangladesh and the third bridge at on the hubli linked with it that makes a far stronger case but that's in the future 
that's very much in the future. So let us see what we can do to preserve this marvel. What are the practical things we can do? What are the things we can do to get more people in favor of it? And do allow me once again to thank the government of Assam for you know being part of this, for having sensitive people who care about uh, how how difficult it is to put something like this together. It's difficult to put any piece of heritage together. It's difficult enough to sew, you know, something, weave something, grow something. This is something that humanity has learned over time. Destroying it takes far less time. If this bridge is deemed uh, unworthy, or, you know, not safe, it's very easy to demolish it. As we've seen from the images, the decking has gone, the trusses are in bad shape. Uh, the pile uh, foundation will probably be, it can be eroded and, you know, but it has stood the test of time so far. It's old, but it's still there. Let us do what we can to keep it there. My plea, um, Dilipta, all of our Northeastern Zone, Northeast Zone ICOMOS members and non-members, you already have the material. Let's put together a booklet, the pre presentations we have had, and uh, the, the man who in 1998 shared his drawings. If he allows his name to be again used, let us honor that part of making the drawings also. Let's put together a monograph and let's start working towards preserving not just this example, which we have to, the Dikau Steel, Steel Bridge, but other related aspects. You know, where did they go? Did they stop to take water from somewhere? Were they using coal? I'm asking this because I don't know. If they were using coal, did they also carry back the oil at some point? So many connected questions. Uh, just like these questions are interconnected, so are we. So from the extreme west of our country, Jaipur, where it is getting dark, my good wishes to all of you in the Northeast, where I'm sure going by the time it is already dark, but in the darkness, the light comes from the fact that we care about heritage, we care about the Deco Steel Bridge, and we care about all the other things, all the heritage walks that can be done, everything that can be done. Once again, thank you for having me here. Uh, please make sure that we put in a letter of thanks to the government of Assam, to the PWD departments, to all our senior colleagues who are taking part from ICOMOS also. And let's I know this is going to be on YouTube very soon. So let's hope you have a lot of hits and people get to know more about it. Then just the few images that we have on the web page, on Wikipedia, on uh, IGNCA's archive page, and some which are people who just drive past like I did and posted it because it just looked different. So once again, thank you from me. Uh, Anju, thank you for uh, organizing the webinar and back to all of you now. And I'm still listening. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your encouraging words. And <clears throat> definitely it's going to motivate us to proceed and then work further in the field of heritage. And with this, I'm moving to the next and probably the last uh, topic, uh, last speech of this webinar, which is going to be delivered by Engineer Simanta Gamuli. And after his uh, uh, speech, we are going to do the questionnaire session. So the Engineer Simanta Gamuli, uh, he's going to deliver yes, his speech. Sorry, sir. Yes. Uh, he's going yes. to deliver Good morning, sir. Good evening to all. Am I audible, sir? So just a Am minute. I we introduce you. That's the minute we introduce you. Yeah. So just a minute. I'm just introducing your topic and I'll okay. give a brief introduction of yours as well. Uh, his topic that uh, he's going to uh, talk about, he's going to talk about the uniqueness, social impact, economic upliftment of locality, eligibility of World Heritage Site of the Colonial Deco Bridge of Assam. And uh, with this, I'd like to welcome Engineer Simanta Tamuti to this webinar. And I'd like to also give a brief introduction of him. He is a seasoned professional 
and he had started his academic journey in uh, with distinction completing his hslc from sarupathar high school in 1982 his pursuit of excellence continued with a degree degree in science from dr college golaghat followed by the bachelor of engineering in civil department from jorhat engineering college commencing his career as a site engineer with messrs ac borboda and company he supervised diverse projects including the foundation works of bricks and rail loading dentry construction in 2003 engineer tamuli joined the esteemed assam public works road department as an assistant engineer his expertise encompasses the supervision of 24 bridges spanning both pile and well bridge construction and also numerous road projects under pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana currently he is holding the position of assistant executive engineer in at demo territorials road super to road subdivision engineer tamuli's dedication and wealth of experience make him a valuable asset to the to our prestigious meeting so with this i'd like to welcome mr <coughs> engineer tamuli to give his, deliver his speech okay thank you <coughs> good evening to all <coughs> nested in the northeastern part of india sivasagar stands tall as a city surrounded in a rich historical legacy in addition to its natural beauty Sir, in out nested in the northeastern part of india sivasagar stands tall as a city surrounded in a rich historical legacy in addition to its natural beauty sivasagar is renowned for marvelous historical monuments each bearing testimony to glorious past amidst this an enchanting landscape the sivasagar steel bridge stands tall not only as a magnificent field of engineering but a crucial link connecting to the various regions with a combination of exquisite design structural strength and technical expertise this bridge has become an integral part of assam transportation network next coming to history the dikho steel bridge as already said it was built by the renowned engineering firm mrs braithwaite and co company india limited over the river dikho starting in the year 1925 which was completed in 1935 the responsibility for dikho steel bridge construction was given to braithwaite company which hailed from england this company constituted a unit at kolkata in the name of braithwaite company india limited the steel parts of the bridge were manufactured to size by then england's british steel company and india's tata iron steel company jointly the parts manufactured in england were first brought to kolkata and then transported in smaller lots by small ships along with the parts uh, from tata iron steel company these ships then started their cruise from kolkata to thanagar at sivasagar making their entrance via dikhomuk in sivasagar this was how the construction materials were brought to the site The entire construction was done under the guidance of Hari Prasad Bulwara, who was the engineer in charge for the project. With many hurdles and hardships, as well as dedication of the workers, it took ten years for successful completion. Next, moving on to uniqueness. During the, that era, waterways transport played an important role in trade and related affairs between Assam and Kolkata. West Bengal. Assam Tea Company, established at Najira, transported tea to Calcutta by ships through this river road. The uniqueness about this bridge is that the mid section could be lifted up to let the ships pass through, so that the waterways transport continues to contribute for trade and communication between Calcutta and Assam. This bridge was built to improve transportation network between several important regions and to facilitate the movement of. agricultural produce from rural area to urban markets one of the notable features of the dikho steel is its structural strength it is built to withstand the weight of heavy vehicle and accommodate substantial traffic volumes the engineer behind this marvel employed advanced techniques which can withstand the natural calamities like flood and earthquakes next
coming to social impact and economic upliftment of the locality. Firstly, it will generate employment opportunities directly as well as indirectly for individuals involved in construction and real industries. Secondly, it will boost the local economy and potentially influence the psychology, the art of living, and the standard of living of the locality and the region. It may also attract one's mindset with the view that everything is possible to achieve by proper application of technology. Thirdly, increased tourism and economic growth of the region. It will promote local business and cultural exchange. This also gives the opportunities of earning revenue that can be invested in the maintenance and preservation of the place. Coming to restoration and benefits. Firstly, maintaining the original designs and architectural elements so that it will help to preserve its historical significance and allow visitors to appreciate its beauty. Secondly, the proper lighting solutions for total illumination, which will highlight its architectural elements. Additionally, landscaping the area with walking paths and view platforms for tourists to walk around and enjoy the panoramic views. Thirdly, installing the visual displays, which will narrate the history and cultural significance of the place and the historical monuments of the Aum dynasty. Fourthly, cultural events and festivals. Every year, with the collaboration with the local people, a cultural event or festival could be organized in the vicinity of the bridge site. This will attract both domestic and international tourists throughout the year and promote the local cultural traditions, photography, point and fishing point. I'm a bit fast due to time constraints, sorry. Next. Activity. The bridge is located at the distance of 359 kilometers from Guwahati, the capital city of Assam. Uh, this place also provides access to historic Dhudurali, which is a two, 212 kilometer long road starting from Kamargao in Guwahati to Joypur in Dibrugo district. Visitors may also take a trip to the nearby state of Nagaland, the land of festivals, and the state of Arunachal Pradesh, the land of the rising sun, to enjoy the vibrant festivals ethereal views, picturesque landscapes, pristine beauty, and diverse range of flora and fauna. How to reach uh, boundaries, uh, boundaries of the beast. To the uh, east, Nazira civil subdivision and Solaido district. To the west, Brahmaputra river and Majuli district. To the north, Sivasava district headquarters and Dibrua district. To the south, Amguri LSC, Kiyok LSC, and Jurhat district. Then, how to reach? By air, Royal Airport is at Jura, which is located at a distance of 55 km from the bridge site. Mumbai Airport at Dibrugarh, which is located at the distance of 90 km. The nearest railway station is Sivasagar railway station, located at 2.2 km. The Simulogi railway station is also there, which is located at the distance of 16 km. By road, bus services and tourist taxis are available from Guwahati and other important towns. There is a bypass. SS starts at 505 kilometer of National Highway 37 from west, and another bypass SS which starts at 514 kilometer of National Highway 37 from west. There are a number of hotels in Sivasagar town where the best quality food and lodging facilities are available for tourists coming from different parts of the world. By preserving, next, by preserving its engineering marvel and enchanting its aesthetic appeal. The bridge can become a gateway to Sivasagar's rich cultural heritage. Sivasagar, once the capital of Ahum Kingdom, is a treasure trove of the ancient architectural and cultural heritage. The magnificent Sivodol, meaning the temple of the Lord Shiva, is a group of, of structures comprising three Hindu temples of Sivodol, Vishnudol, meaning the temple of Lord Vishnu, and Devidol, meaning temple of Goddess Devi Durga, in the local Assamese language. Shrines and a museum. These are located on the banks of the Sivasagar tank, also known as Borbukri tank, in the heart of Sivasagar, in the Indian state of Assam. The height of the Sivodol is 104 feet and the perimeter is 195 feet at the base. It is crowned with an 8 feet high golden dome. Here one can find the proof of Exquisite carvings and stone masonry reflecting art artistic excellence of the Ahom dynasty. Another architectural theme is the Talatul an underground palace 
built also as a military base. This is considered to be the largest of the monument built during the Ahom era. This seven-story structure with tunnels, hidden chambers, and unique uh, architecture attracts the tourists and historians. Four stories can be still be seen on the ground, and the other three underground stories were still and filled during the British era. Adjacent to the Toladogar is the Rongor, an amphitheater that served as the Royal Sports Pavilion. This amphitheater is known as first amphitheater or first pavilion of Asia and is believed to be Asia's oldest surviving amphitheater. Its elliptical and elevated position offers a wide panoramic view of the city, symbolizing the grandeur of the Ahom dynasty. Next. Other than the above, the bridge also has access to more than hundreds of ancient monuments situated in the historic Shibsagar. Some popular and most visited tourist destinations are listed below. The colonial depot silver itself. Joy Sagar Tank and Temples, Karengar, Golaghar, Sraidu Moidams, the burial uh, mounds of the Ahom kings, queens, and nobles. These mounds are considered equivalent to Egyptian pyramids. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has chosen the Moidams from 52 sites across India for the UNESCO nomination. The Moidams represent 13th, 19th century, say, late uh, medieval mound burial tradition of the Thai Ahom community of Assam. Then Thauradol, then comes Fakwadol. Horoguri Dol, Ganesham Dol, Bakarabhina Tree, a legendary living tree which is scientifically estimated to be 580 years old, Namdang Stone Bridge. Goi Sagar Peng and Dol. Next. Next, please. Next slide, please. Then Goi Sagar Peng and Dol. Then comes Rudol Sagar Peng and Dol. Namti, Vishnu Dol and Devi Dol, Gorkhya Dol, Haraguri Dol, Jagadhati Dol, Vishnu Dol and Lokhi Sagar Teng, Pohugol, Ajahn Pidorga, Ramkha Pid Devalaya, Dishanmu, Central Baptist Church, Paniding, Birds and Strength, Lord Mo. Considering the existence of all the above, the Dikho still may play a crucial role in promoting tourism in the region. His strategic location on the river Dikho offers stunning panoramic views of the surroundings, including the lush greenery and if flowing water below. Visitors can enjoy works. People can organize some exhibitions, showcase its architecture, as well as conduct some workshops, etc. The restoration of this steel bridge could be welcome. Many possibilities we ever could imagine. Can you share my second part two PPT where photographs of that? Tamil go on. Okay. It is uh, the picture. This is Sibodol. Devidol. The heart of the city it is located. This is Sibodol. Jogodhakti Dol. Gonsam House. Dividal at Gori Sagar. Pohugar. Pass Nessel Ju. Wrong. No Kukri Sibodol at Rudra Sagar. Karengar. The Royal Palace of Ahom Kingdom, which is at Gorogam. Tolatogar. Gulagar. Magazines are stored there. Bistudo. Akwadu. Is the top view of the Pakwadu? Aerial view. Side elevation of Pakwadu. Side elevation of Pakwadu. Again, Pakwadu. David, at Guru Sahib. Devido, Namdi. 
जो शायद वो टाइम विष्णु लोग जो शायद दिशांगु पिकनिक स्पॉट विंटर माइग्रेटरी बार्स कम ये सिर्फ साढ़े टेन पानी दिन बार सेंसरी दिस इज आजान पीर डोलगा बाकर वे ना टीवी फाइव एंड एटी इस ओल्ड टीवी सेंट्रल बेप्टिस्ट्स बाकर इस आई थिंक फोर्टी फाइव ओल्डेस्ट These are the hotels available at Simsala. Hotel Brahm Hotel. Hotel Picol. Heritage Joy Sagar Restaurant. Do we have? थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी दिस मास ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू ओके आई लाइक टू थैंक यू इंजीनियर सुमंत तामोली फॉर हिज वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड अलोंग विद पिको ब्रिज आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू थैंक दैट ही हैव शोन द ब्यूटीफुल पिक्चर्स ऑफ डिफरेंट हिस्टोरिक एंड स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ शिव सागर एंड मेकिंग इट वेरी interesting for us and uh, thank you so much sir with this i would like to tell you all that we are actually proceeding towards the end of this session and uh, there will not be any more presentation now so with this i am opening the session for question here so a uh, question and answer session is open now so one by one you can ask a question to our respective speakers and they will answer or you can probably write it in the chat box also and i will read it out to uh, to the speakers as well dilip sir uh, yes i saw some pictures uh, just in, in the next uh, passing week i am visiting dharampur and i have got some uh, some pictures of the dharampur bridge was august of 1936 the house is destroyed this is dharampur bridge next and this is here it is uh, see that this is this is constructed at uh, 1936 the next year of the deco bridge the next slide please uh, this this is the um, uh, carriage way then next slide and a railing next slide please uh, this is another view then next slide next slide please and uh, this is the whole bridge then next slide This is another view of Kerasway and the structure. So my question is that: Is this bridge is going to be a heritage uh, structure? If we explore the other bridge, which is built within the 1932 or 1940, then we can uh, survey, make it survey, and then at a heritage site uh, as a whole. Up for Assam, is it possible? If possible, then what will? Uh, uh, how can we going to be possible? Yeah. 
So you must say yes. And any help from our uh, PWD? Okay, this is from me. Any question? Okay, anybody else has any question? I saw there are Biresha Mukherjee sir. Mukherjee sir. Mukherjee sir. Sir, can I ask a question to Nilakpal sir? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nilakpal sir, I am really impressed with the kind of uh, research that you have done in this way. I just want to know, like, while, while you were documenting it, first, like, I just wanted to know ki how the local of that area, what is their, you know, uh, take on this bridge, whether they were they are aware of the importance of this bridge or not. And another thing is that we think uh, APWD also has an architecture team. So what is your take? Like what is at the department level, what are the initiatives uh, taken for the preservation or probably restoration of this bridge? Can you put some light on this? See, uh, being a steel bridge, it can always be uh, repaired very easily. The repair of the foundation part may be difficult, but it's not like impossible. It can be repaired, rehabilitated. But uh, this is a policy making kind of thing. Uh, I at this uh, level cannot uh, give you a guarantee whether PWD will take up the repair and rehabilitation work because we have a lot of other works uh, or other area where people even are not getting connectivity till now. So we're spending a lot of money, including government of India to connect all those people first. But at the same time, we don't want to lose this uh, kind of heritage structures. People in the locality uh, love the site. They love the base. I have spoken to many people, a head, a headman of uh, that particular area. He have never seen uh, the lifting uh, mechanism of the bridge because it was uh, closed uh, immediately after post-independence because the steamer service uh, was uh, actually stopped post-independence. Uh, but uh, somebody, I have, uh, I, I have read somebody's article where he has written that he has seen that uh, the lifting uh, mechanism of that uh, breeze somewhere around 80s. But I don't think that this is correct. Uh, so it can be uh, it can be repaired if fund is uh, made available. It can be repaired. The difficult part is your foundation, the supporting arrangement. It is in danger. It is in, in a very vulnerable condition. The breeze may collapse at any moment. But it can be repaired. Somebody has to take the initiative. Fund is the issue. Sir, uh, may I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, uh, actually, sir, uh, every department, mainly PWD department, uh, should have some extra budget for um, structural heritage. Uh, if uh, uh, your department can initiate uh to the government for the reparation for uh, restoration projects then it can be possible uh, i think actually, and uh, awareness awareness also be uh, uh, will also create for your department also and for government also uh, but ma'am um, um, deep nobody clearly answering i'm uh, not in a right place to give you a proper answer to that its policy making is always uh, part of the government. So I think uh, our commissioner will be able to uh, give you a right uh, reply to your query. Yes, but from your uh, side or your office, uh, yeah, um, your department yeah, can see, initiate. See, being in the government department, I have to follow orders that comes from above. I can definitely raise the issue, 
but yes. I cannot give you an assurance on I'm not the right, uh, I mean, not in a right position to uh, to give you a proper answer. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else has any query or anything to discuss? The platform is open for everyone for discussion. I can see Vikram Ji sir also here. Vikram Ji sir, would you like to share something? I have been hearing about this uh, heritage UNESCO heritage idea uh, if uh, the PWD is uh, serious about uh, getting heritage uh, status for this and other bridge a proposal can be put up by the government of in India uh, as a as a cluster not only for the Deco Bridge, but as pointed out by Dilip Chankakoti, uh, uh, both uh, the Deco Bridge and the Dharamthul Bridge, and possibly all such bridges which are about 100 years old, then uh, it may be uh, feasible because uh, Hara Bridge uh, is already uh, very famous and um, since uh, the deco bridge has been uh, de has been designed after the bridge on Thames in London so that may be uh, that, that may be a, a good idea we can take it up uh, after the government submitted a proposal because from icomos we can uh, campaign only after the government submits the proposal. Uh, ICOMOS will come to inspect it. Uh, we'll do the uh, DEX review once the, it, it is submitted to UNESCO. So we will get in, involved only after the proposal goes from the government of Assam. So if the public works department is serious. We can land our uh, hand, and we will be at your disposal to offer the necessary expertise and advices. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you so much, Sanjeev sir, for sharing your thoughts with us, and you have rightly pointed out the issues with it, and also how the way we should proceed on it. Now, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, call Reema ma'am again and give us uh, her remarks, ending remarks probably, because we are going to uh, end this question answer session now. Reema ma'am, over to you. Well, uh, allow me once again to formally thank the government of Assam and its representatives and to individually thank the speakers for their excellent presentations. But along with that, allow me also to thank all of you who put together this webinar at relatively short notice, a few months of asking people. And I think it's taken more time to get the infrastructure, you know, getting the Zoom link and everything than it did for you to put the initial idea across to the colleagues who I believe jumped at the idea instantly. This is a sobering thought with this is that even as we speak, there are structures across the world that are being lost because sometimes we say, oh, but this is not very old. It's less than a hundred years old. We have so many other beautiful things to preserve. That is correct. There are lots of beautiful things. But human ingenuity, human engineering skills, human technological advances, whether they belong to the 9th century or the early 20th century or the late 20th century, need to be equally celebrated. And the next time we see a building of the 20th century, think of it as 
is it something that you or I cannot recreate easily? Well, I certainly cannot. I don't have those skills, but several of you do. Once again, what we need to do is have the public voice raised because I know that the government of Assam is very sensitive to heritage matters. They are also already considering whether uh, Shiva Sagar monuments you know, can be better put on the national map. They're already on the national map. So let us say on the international map. But I think the human ingenuity in putting together something like a bridge input and I when I say ancillary structures which I put on the chat box it's also where do these boats of that time that would have gone up and down and passed the bridges have uh, docked what were the other features there did they have a little train taking something to export don't forget we you mentioned um um, Sanjeev, you just mentioned the London thing on the Thames. And you know what is, uh, I think if the British had their way, they would certainly regret the fact that the original London Bridge was sold. It was dismantled and they have a replica there. Or that's what the urban legend is. We are fortunate that you have people who have researched the Dikau Bridge. They have researched other bridges of that period or other, as I say, ancillary structures. And let's put our heads together and see how best we can at least get more public recognition and then national and international recognition. If it's UNESCO, good. But to get to UNESCO, we have to take slow steps. And for the slow steps, as I said, you are already cautious and careful. So we can't rush into something because one of the analogies I often use is if I take my great-grandmother's hand-embroidered shawl, and say the colors have faded, the material has got torn, and I get a professional to do beautiful copied embroidery on a new fabric, it's not going to be my great-grandmother's shawl. The What they have made can be, you know, structurally where it is necessary, we do that. We do not replicate it, or we replicate it where we want a film shoot happening. No harm in that also. We just need to have our ideas clear. And fortunately for all of us, everyone on this webinar have their ideas and our uh, people, I wish I could have been with you face to face. I would certainly gain much more. So we'll keep that for another time. Thank you once more for joining uh, the webinar. Uh, on, and uh, uh, let me also thank Arushi, who's sitting in Delhi, uh, making sure that our PPTs are shown on time and will eventually you, be it on YouTube. Is that correct? You do put it on YouTube once it goes past us? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Right. I so, have already done for two webinars. which happened. Okay, oh, good. So you will do that. Uh, Anju, thank you also for being here, for doing this so efficiently. And now it's over to you again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I can see Bikram Ji probably has resolved his uh, mic problem. So I'd like to introduce Bikram Ji to everybody. He's the coordinator of this chapter of ICOMOS India and Vikram Ji sir definitely would love to hear from you. Over to you Vikram sir. Am I audible? Yes sir, you are audible. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, I guess uh, some issues at my network level. That's why a uh, little bit of disturbance. But anyway, uh, I was uh, following the whole uh, session and uh, very rightly, Reema ma'am point out one thing, which is the uh, importance of documentation. And I suggest, and earlier also with Dilip ji, we had a discussion, a brief discussion that uh, all these bridges if uh, one by one we engage the uh, highest level of advanced documentation technique, say laser scanning and drone survey like uh, method, and then first preserve the existing entities as a base data, and then slowly we can understand and we can also sort of uh, investigate that what is the kind of status where the issues are and slowly accordingly with the 
you know uh, pwd we can develop the strategy for further steps of course conservation is an issue but as very rightly pointed out ma'am that uh, uh, transnational boundary based uh, nomination if we want to do that definitely the documentation is is very important and more authentic sort of documentation because it is very difficult to document this bridges manually because it is herculean task and precision will be compromised so that is what we can think about this is what i just wanted to present to in front of everybody and thank you sir thank you for presenting uh, uh, the situation the case and it is very important for uh, all of us as a nation yeah thank you now i would like to move to the end of this uh, webinar and i would like to thank everybody who is uh, involved in this uh, webinar whether as a coordinator whether as a um, and uh, whether as a speaker and also to all our viewers for patiently listening to the speakers and also discussing the matter i'd like to especially thank rdc for successfully coordinating this webinar and now i would like to move uh, and uh, uh, i'd like to ask uh, the coordinator of northeast chapter of icomos india to give the vote of thanks thank you anju we thank uh, our uh, pwd commissioner uh, uh, sandan sharma and uh, when i give one application to him and he forwarded to the our pwd minister kam chief minister ekanta bishwa sharma and uh, dr sharma approved uh, this uh, application and we got the three very respectable uh, resource person and uh, we thanks them we also thanks uh, the purpose uh, Resource person Abdul Mutin Choudhury and his colleagues Himad Dishekar Das and Diksha Das, and we thanks Nirupal Polkolita, we thanks Simanto Tamuli, we thanks all our participants, we thanks our respected uh, Madam President Irma Hoza, and we thanks uh, our uh, colleague Vikram uh, Sakravarti, we thanks our moderator. uh anju monikalita and we uh, lastly we thanks our delhi office arusi and uh, she have give lots of the um, uh, technical support because we thanks her uh, many because there are only one person in now delhi she is the only person she have to uh, work load but she have uh, she had uh, with us and we thanks them and we thanks all our viewers in facebook also and uh, uh, now it is thanks to all and it is it is my uh, thank you for now uh, invite uh, anju to say goodbye let's take a group photo before we all leave if people yeah, see yeah, yeah. the camera yeah yeah yes 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 ma'am yes can you can you get me yeah yeah sir yes sir yes sir so yes, i had sir. hard with rapt attention i had hard with rapt attention about the, all the speakers who have, and they have uh, advanced various uh, constructive suggestions about the about the dikhau bridge and especially the engineering techniques that were employed that time and the past history and all of it i have also updated myself a little bit of knowledge before joining this webinar so and one thing i would like to say that varulu bridge that you have been talking about this was reconstructed here this is the first arch, arch bridge sort of in uh, i believe in post independence era and these two end is supported on especially on hinges and these hinges were it was uh, the contract was awarded to the agcc company then it it doesn't exist now nowadays but the hinges they all the designers 
uh, were not very keen to take up the design of the hinge. So only one gentleman, I just named his, I just uh, forgot his name. Uh, he he had a consultancy firm, probably in Bhavani Vajan sort of area. And only he took the responsibility and certified that, yes, he, he was a very good structural designer. And he did the design and this still with this particular um, arch bridge board it's uh, is still standing on that so that was an engineering marvel at least in this part of the country and uh, nobody rather dared that, and we are we are in college then and we are in the final year so uh, since i had a special interest in structure so that is why we went to see and we had a very special attention on the design of the hinge bridge. So uh, that whether that can be preserved properly with that particular hinge bridge, but the deck level is very low actually compared to the other new bridge. So that has to be taken care of. So a lot of a uh, lot of uh, I mean uh, suggestions have been advanced, and you also spoke very much about it. And you are welcome to Guwahati. Maybe together you and me will be visiting the particular site later, so that uh, what sort of thing we can sort it out. Uh, at least we can contact some people who are knowledgeable. I think uh, that will be a better proposition. Uh, thank you, Chankagati. Uh, very 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 much. Thank you for. Uh, and I welcome all the speakers who have spoken very well. And I put my comments as well also in the comment box. And uh, especially in the, due to the audio video problem, I couldn't hear the first part of the first five, six minutes, the first presentation, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be hearing it on the uh, wave tonight. And all the best to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, good night, sir. Okay, thank you. Everyone. Good night. Thank you.